Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this weekly ag weather update brought to you by Ag South Farm Credit. I want to start you off by just giving you a quick recap of uh, what's going on right now with the hurricane season. So we're in our last month of the hurricane season, and as you look at all the names this year, this is going to be an interesting year to study. We had a developing El Nino, which typically tends to shut hurricane seasons down, yet we've already had 18 named systems. The biggest, which have contributed the most to our uh, what's called accumulated cyclone energy, have come from systems like Nigel and Margo and Lee and Franklin. And, and, and these systems, well, they stayed out the open ocean. Lee has been the biggest contributor so far. It was around for several days. It was nine and a half days uh, as, a, as a hurricane. And it, of course, got up to um, you know Category 5 in strength, but it hit, it hit Nova Scotia. And so if you look at it, we'll, we'll look back on this hurricane season as being very busy. But where do we not get the hurricanes this year? We didn't get them out of the Gulf. So they didn't come out of the Gulf and come racing into, you know, uh, the Carolinas or Georgia from the, you know, from, from the West. But as it stands, uh, we're well above our climatological average, but we only have about 30 days left to go in this season. So I just want to bring that up. Right now we're watching what's left of Rena. Here's Philippe. We, you know, no system right now coming out of the Gulf. Nothing expected to come here. But I'm just going to tell you something. I know it's off the page, but let's just keep an eye on this. I know it's in the East Pacific, but there are some indications that this might come and make the turn. And should that happen and this get pulled in, I mean, 10 plus days from now, it's just a situation that's happened in the past when there's been an El Nino, even though we typically see less activity uh, or excuse me, increased activity here in an El Nino. We got to watch this month of October for systems. So I'm just tossing that out there. It's something I want you to watch. But overall, the next 10 days has nothing brewing along the coast. Okay, we, we're just watching this area here in the East Pacific and here nothing. We, we're not right now looking at much. So what are we looking at? Unfortunately, we're looking at flow in the upper levels of the atmosphere that have trended the next seven days and beyond drier. Okay, that's your, that's your big trend. And I want to show you what that looks like. To explain it, I'm going to give you this map, uh, excuse me, this graphic of something called the PNA. Now, this is out in the Pacific Ocean. When we get into our cold season, we'll be talking about the AO, the NAO, and all of those things that affect system strength and path, and path along the East Coast. But we're not there yet. Right now, it's being dominated by the Pacific North American pattern. Whenever it's negative, there's troughs over the West. When it's positive, there's ridges over the West. And look, it's just doing this which means we're going to be watching troughs and ridges coming from the west for the next probably several weeks. So here we are. This is what it's going to look like on Monday. We've got a deep trough that's sitting here, a large ridge that opened in the Midwest over the weekend. And this is the coastal low that's finally leaving here that was part of the reason we were so very wet in the Northeast over the weekend. I'll show you those totals in a second. But I need you to see the bigger picture. As we play through this week, the, the ridge is over us. Let me look how far apart the isobars are. These are actually ISO heights, but same thing. That, that distance represents extremely weak upper level flow. So what's the atmosphere doing? It's dumping a system into the Northwest. We're gonna watch this cutoff flow eject by this little kicker wave into the Midwest. So we're gonna keep an eye on this area. But two week of flow in this area means nothing. We're not gonna see anything out of this. In fact, by the end of this week, this is Wednesday through Thursday and Friday, we end up watching a really deep trough dig in here, and it's going to send some much colder air into the southeast. It's not a frost down here. It'll be a frost for the upper Midwest, for the northern plains and parts of the western plains, possibly getting down into this part of the Corn Belt, maybe. But overall, we're looking at a shot at cooler air for the weekend. But I'm going to tell you something about the jet stream. Okay, if you watch this, the flow's coming in. Whoops, sorry about that. The flow is coming in like this. Now, if you want to be where the action is and where there's moisture, you need to be on this side of the trough here. But this side has all got convergent, dry, and therefore cooler air coming into this region in fall. And therefore, we're not even going to get much out of this over the weekend. That trough comes in and just brings a big shot at drier air. That's all it's doing. So then we go into the weekend and we watch it leave next Tuesday, Wednesday, and look what happens. We open back up with a little ridge. And therefore, we're going to see the temperatures rebound, but no real hint at moisture. It's all coming into the West over the next 10 plus days. So that's the setup. Now, before I get just into that again, I do want to provide you with some more statistics because, of course, we did just finish September. So what happened in September? Well, this is the um, climate district, per climate district, excuse me, average temperature ranks. And overall, we would look in Ag South Territory and say that September was not a hot one. 
overall, when you look at all of it, we were closer to our climatological averages. The heat was in Texas. The heat was in the upper Midwest compared to normal. Those were the two areas that really saw a lot of hot weather. And it was also filled in the gap here in the midsection of the country, but not for us. Now, last week, we talked about uh, the temperature pattern being kind of chilly. And if you look over the last week, while heat built into the midsection of the country, very hot here, we had that backdoor cold front, that high over the northeast, bringing the winds out of the northeast uh, to our region. And it kept things relatively cool. So I did want to show you that. That's just a week, though. Let's go back to the month-long settings and let's look at precipitation. We watched some flash drought develop. Okay. Now, I've made a case that we've not got the right symptoms in the atmosphere to build big drought. But the problem is right now is we're heading, and now we're in fall, excuse me, but heading deeper into fall. The dryness that we've seen in the month of September, right into this area, I think is going to continue to build in the next 10 days. I showed you why in the flow. It's not, it's no good. We've got to have a difference in that flow. Where are there going to continue to be storms? I think to be watching is where they've been. If you noticed over the last seven days, much of Florida, parts of Southern Georgia saw some decent rain. This is a map looking at the last seven days of total accumulated precipitation, but it's only showing you locations that grab more than a half inch. We were drier in the Carolinas up to Virginia. We had some wet weather that was in the upper Midwest. Here's the flooding we saw over the weekend in, in New York, for example. But you come down here, it was all pretty far to the south where the frontal boundary stalled out. We also had some good rain in parts in coastal Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. So with, with kind of that just as a quick hit of the things I'm thinking about, Let's take this and, and move forward with it. So I'm going to show you some satellite data. This was Sunday. The sun had just set off the West Coast as I was recording. So let me take you back to the day here. Around the backside of this low, this is all smoke. So after all that flooding rain we saw in, in, in uh, New York, for example, they actually saw smoke in the sky here on Sunday. That smoke was from a week ago burning in fires in northern Saskatchewan. But what do we have here? I mean, if you just notice, where's the deep low? It's out in the west. Our flow just stinks. There's just nothing. We had some scattered clouds today, heavy rain in Florida, but we were overall just out of it. We, we were not in the right spot to get the right kind of flow to get some moisture to come in. And But then we look across the northern hemisphere and we say, well, at least I don't see this, right? Uh, there's a trough. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. I see, I see flow in the atmosphere. But is it getting down to where I want it to get, which is right into this area? And is there any tropical system coming through? I've got no good flow for you, and I've got no tropical system. So the trend has gone drier. And a week ago, we had questioned it. Right? We saw the, the bit of a drier signal, but we've now watched it go drier and drier with each new run. So what do we have? Well, let's just pick this up really sun, uh, Monday morning, excuse me. And as I play your actions in the West, it's in the Midwest by the time we get to Tuesday night into Wednesday. And we've got this flow again that's coming out of this direction. It's coming from here and it's not bringing in the moisture. Can you see it? All the action is going to be in the plains this week with respect to severe weather. So what does this all get to? It all gets to this graphic right here. This is your next 10 days looking at precipitation compared to normal. Very wet in parts of Texas, wet in parts of the Canadian prairie. That's from a system that's ejecting here and two shots at rain coming in the Pacific Northwest. We are way off of normal in parts of the Southeast and Ag South Territory right now. And we're looking at pretty dry conditions. Now let's put this into context, okay? Soil moisture. This is the last uh, data we've got from NASA here at the beginning of October, looking at 100 centimeter soil moisture values. Now I do expect your numbers to be dropping here over the next 10 plus days. But are they going to be able to drop as low as they are throughout the Mississippi Basin, parts of the Ohio River Valley, the upper Great Lakes, uh, all the way over to the uh, parts of the Missouri Valley? No, you're not going to get this dry. We're drier, but we're not going to get this dry. The dryness that's in here has caused the drop monitor to continue to show greater area. I do think that on the next drop monitor, we will start to see more of parts of Axe Health Territory in that first stage of abnormally dry. But we have big questions as to whether or not we're going to be able to cure this drought long standing. Now, every single long-range forecast, all of them, have wet weather through this whole area all winter. I have not found a single one that doesn't. And it's all driven by El Nino. But we have to ask some questions about this El Nino. We're going to do that here in just a few moments. So I want to know, are we going to cure drought across the south? Are we going to prevent drought in Ag South Territory down here in the southeast? What's going to happen to the Midwest drought? And, and what's going to happen in the Pacific Northwest? So let's kind of get into that. First, I do want to let you know that if you come down here to where the Ohio River comes into the Mississippi, so that's Illinois, 
This is Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Missouri. Several of these gauges on the Mississippi River, let's go to Cairo, for example, in southern Illinois. Whoops, right there. There we go. You see the graphic that appeared in the upper right? Just to show you how low the Mississippi is right now. Low stage is 9.2 feet in depth. It's currently down to 7.2 feet. So it's 2.2 feet below low stage, or 2.2 feet below low stage. We come farther to the south. Let's just go down here. This is at Hickman. Low stage is one foot. We are at negative 0.33 feet. We can just keep going down. Let's pick this one. This is uh, Crothersville. Low stage is at four feet. We are right now almost 0.6 feet below low stage. And if I just keep sliding on down here, let's go down and have a look at Memphis. Memphis, low stage is at minus five feet. We're currently at almost minus 10. And as you just saw, that 10 day forecast does not have a whole lot of moisture coming into this area. So there's a lot of concern over what's going to happen to the Mississippi to start October. We are forecasting better rains later, but not right now. So this is a dry region I'm watching in Ag South all the way down to the lower Mississippi River Valley. It's a, a dry area that I'm going to be watching carefully. So what do we expect to see? Well, you've already seen the next couple of days. Let's just stretch this out with the European model. Flow is weak. High pressure is in place. I'm already to Wednesday, Thursday, maybe a push at some showers coming in late this week. Here's the main frontal boundary from the low that's ejecting here. So see the front? Is it going to get to us? Remember, when these lows go into uh, parts of Quebec out of Ontario, this front has nothing. It doesn't have any flow on it. This low has to dive and eject in order for us to get a big, strong push at some really, really cold air that has rain on the front edge of it. So this is by Friday. We need to watch this frontal boundary passing. But right now, the models are not generous with the rainfall. So that front comes through Friday into Saturday. And as it does so, we're not looking at anything really getting into our area. So it's really kind of robbing us. We just don't have the strong front pushing through. So through Sunday and Monday of next week, we continue dry as all the action resets in the west. So if we add all this up, this is what we get. I didn't, that's you Saturday. And we just see that weak front coming through on Friday, not bringing in any chance of moisture. Where's the moisture going to be? Southern Plains, scattered storms throughout the Midwest, heavier rains up in this side of the Canadian prairie, and decent moisture coming into the Western United States, especially when the second wave comes on next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But that is the 10 day outlook from today's European forecast. And right now it's got nil. I mean, just nothing for most of Ag South Territory. Not well forecast a week or two weeks ago. We did not see this uh, kind of, it's almost like a bit of a fall flash drought scenario setting up, but we want to know if it's going to last. So we look out there into week two, and we've got this from the models. There is some semblance of better flow that could be coming out of the Gulf, bringing in better moisture into week two. It will be drier in the upper Midwest. That's in all three models. But there are some question marks as to whether or not we can return some better moisture in Ag South ter Territory excuse me, as we begin that second week in October. The first eight or nine days of October, though, are dry. They're dry. Now, I've mentioned that we've got some cooler weather that's coming in. This is currently, now remember, I record these on Sunday night. So from Sunday to next Saturday, this is where we're currently forecasting a frost. Now you're going to see, if you keep up with my daily forecast videos I do every morning, that we're going to watch this fill in more throughout the Midwest and Upper Midwest. There's some pretty chilly air that's coming in with this uh, with this forecast. But let's do this. Uh, National Digital Forecast Database. There's max temperatures. That was Sunday's highs. Let's get into, whoops, let's get into Monday. There we go. Here's today. So you can see still summer-like heat here, near normal for us. We're going to watch that warmth spread toward us by Tuesday into Wednesday, but we don't ever really break away from our above average temps. And by the time we get into Wednesday and Thursday, we're watching some colder air beginning to build its way right there. There's Friday. We have a brief warm up at the end of the week, but we're going to watch that cold air advance toward us next weekend and then getting into early next week. How cold is it going to be? Well, we could see these temperatures coming out of the 70s and getting into maybe the upper 60s, but that'll be next week, not now, but next week. And uh, we'll watch those overnight lows cool off as well. There's some drier air with this. So it's going to be nice. It's just I don't like the direction it's going. I need to see more moisture coming in so that we've got that moisture in reserve when we need it and we don't show up on the drought monitor. But we've got eight or nine or ten days of some drier weather that is coming up. So bigger picture on the temperatures. Here's your next five days. 
that's the cool weather coming in day five through ten so you can see how much cooler than average we're going to be but then this pattern is still open it's north but it's open we watch the warmer air try to roll its way back in toward the middle of the month so i still would tell you that this pattern is week on week off right we talked about that last week but i think the better flow is north of where you are it is not coming down into ag south territory now i've got bigger questions as to the way the rest of october shapes up and one of the things i'll be watching is the mjo it is expected to get over here into phase eight or phase one. That's near Africa or way out in the middle of the Pacific. There's kind of two different phases that give us the same results, okay? What are those results? Well, when you have an El Nino building, which we do, those results tend to look something like this. If we get over into phase eight, deep west troughs, big ridges over Greenland. Now, I want this all winter long. Okay, I'll be honest with you. I want this all winter long. You say, why? Because if we get deep troughs into the west, they get snow. That reduces drought. You get deep troughs into the west, the flow goes south of it and then ejects. Therefore, you get storm systems that are born right in through this area from Texas over to the Mississippi River. If we get deep troughs like this and then blocking ridges over Greenland, the high pressure over Greenland sends systems straight up the east coast. No chance at all of us building drought. This is a drought reducing pattern. Should we see a lot of this this winter? It's the same thing with phase one. That's phase one. This is phase eight. It's a very similar look. But we've got questions as to whether or not we're going to get stuck in a configuration like this. It would help if El Nino would dominate. It really would. El Nino needs to kick it into gear to become the most dominant factor as we go forward. But as it stands, the newest long range forecast going from October 10th to November 10th, it's got a mixed bag for you here. In other words, we don't see overly wet conditions, but we don't see super dry conditions lasting. The first 10 days, yeah, but October 10th to November 10th, I think the pattern stays active enough to keep us, the majority of our area, off that drought monitor here in fall. Now, could a little bit of dry weather go a long way this fall to kind of help us get some field work done to get us started with, uh, you know, other things? Sure, but we've got to have the moisture back in so that we're not worrying about it overall. All right, one last thing to show you on this longer range. This is the next week from the CFSV2 model. And again, we do see the drier risks. Week two, uh, see how we're trying to pull ourselves back into normal while it's drier in the Midwest? What about week three? We see wet. Week four, we go back dry. So you see what I'm saying? This pattern isn't blocked. It's not stuck. We just have two week of flow for the next 10 days, but we don't see it lasting. I, I, I don't see it lasting week in, week out for the next month. I think we're going to get better flow overall. Just we saw a, a drier trend overall in the forecast models. Now, I've got some new data I want to share with you. This is the newest from the Climate Prediction Center. They put out a risk last week that they're concerned about flash drought developing in this area. But beyond that, their week three, week four forecast tries to keep the driest conditions in the Appalachia Mountains, in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and west. So see that? In terms of temperatures, this would be mid-October, week two and week three of October. They got you near normal. But they did also release their new one-month outlook. Now this was highly biased to the next week, okay? Highly biased to what we're seeing over the next week dry conditions here. I, I cannot fully put my faith into this forecast here because October is going to be a month of volatility overall. Now, could we see more warm days than cooler days across the country? Yeah, I definitely think that's a possibility. These shots of colder are just that. They're a shot of colder air. And they're going to back off. But overall, that's what we've kind of got for the next month. Now, as you can see, I'm not overly confident in what I just shared with you in these forecasts. I, I, I'm showing you some things as they're starting to shift around, but I'm not here just brimming with confidence on where this is going to go. I am quite concerned that the dry trend we just saw might be something of bigger concern. But if the pattern resists blocking, then I don't buy this at all. Okay? Now, I told you I'd give you some new long-range data. This was just released from the Canadians. They're always first. The Canadians release their stuff on the 1st of October, the Europeans on the 5th, the U.S. either on the 6th or the 7th. We then get some of the other long-range models all the way to the middle of the month, and we kind of put them in each video to show you what's new. So next week, we'll get new European model data. But the Canadians are being quite generous. They're wet October, November, December in California. They're wet in the West. They're wet from Eastern Texas all the way to New York. I mean, this whole area with the wettest conditions bordering on Ag South territory. 
They're wet October, November, December. They're wet. Let's go to the next one. November, December, January. They're wet. December, January. I mean, they're just giving the rain to everybody but the Northwest. Now, remember, I think it is because the model is just overly fixated on the developing El Nino. And this El Nino hasn't yet done what normal El Ninos would do. It didn't control the hurricane season. There was drought in the Midwest. I mean, that's not typical of El Nino. So I got a question if this El Nino has its typical flavors for our winter. You could say that, yes, it's right now an east-based El Nino. It's not one of those central-based El Ninos. But we got to pay attention to a few other things going on, like the cold water in the Gulf of Alaska, or this cool phase of water that stretches from Hawaii all the way to the Baja, and the warmth that's still in the North Atlantic. Now, I could buy in to having a strong jet coming off of that. Sure. And if that happens, bring it on. You'll get this. But we need to see that subtropical jet taking over in order to give me full confidence in this. All right. So what about things going on internationally? This is the next 10 days from the European model internationally. So there's our dry signal. Look down in South America. Very wet east and south in Brazil and also into central parts of Mato Grosso. The dryness is up here near the Amazon. So if this wetter weather does come into this area, we could expect planting progress to continue to match the five-year average, which is where it is right now. So we're not as fast as we were a year ago. They were about 2% more planted a year ago than they are right now, but it's also not slow. Remember, 90% of the crop is planted in October. So by the end of October, if we're not up here, if we're outside of this range, there's going to be problems. But I don't think there is. I think there's better moisture that's coming in. So keep an eye on this. This is flooding in southern Brazil. This is drier in the Amazon. Elsewhere around the world, the Ganges River Valley is still very, very wet. So is Southeast Asia. You can see some flooding rains on the headwaters of the uh, Yangtze River. This is very wet in spring during an El Nino for Western Australia. And also down here in Queensland, New South Wales, and Victoria, and also Tasmania is expecting some wet weather. This is wet for this time of year, given an El Nino forming. Europe, though, overall, drier week ahead, as we can see here. So I wanted to just kind of point out a few things happening internationally. We've got a lot to watch. I hope that by the time I talk next Monday, we see the weak flow breaking down and better systems getting in place so that we don't end up back on that drought monitor. So let's keep a close sign it together. I'll bring you up to speed again next week. Until then, have a good one. Thanks.